My name is uh, John Carpenter, and I'm sitting here today with the Rod. one, the only, <laughs> Roddy Piper. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here oh, with man, you. Oh, man, it's nice. <laughs> it's been uh, 12 years since John and I have watched this movie. Uh, and we're going to be so truthful with you. <laughs> 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 because it was a fun, hard movie to make. Oh, we had a great time making yeah. it, though. But we, we had to put in a little bit of... Uh, Pain and yep. suffering to get it done, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did, but uh, it was all worth it. You know, like here, remember, remember this? You're telling me, I says, how much? He says, what was it, twelve thousand dollars to have the train pass by? That's right. And so the guy missed the track or something, and we had to do it again. It was horrible. Yeah. This, well, we introduce you right away. Here you are. This is kind of an interesting film. This was uh, made during the the Reagan years in the United States, and I was. Uh, trying to say something about it in a science fiction movie and I was also trying to I don't know maybe elevate science fiction and, and invasion movies a little bit higher than they had been but uh, you played a man named John Nada Nada is means uh, nothing, nothing. let me help you with that nothing, nothing. yes he's nobody he's Wor a... worm on the ro worm on the sidewalk when it's raining that's what Nada means <laughs> But no, but he's a, he's very important to our story. He's the he's the guy who uncovers uh, everything uh, that happens. I think we're seeing the credits here. Uh, these are French credits. But basically, they released this movie in Europe as Invasion Los Angeles. I didn't know. Oh that. yeah, Invasion of Los Angeles. You know what what a lot of people don't realize, John is. You were so much ahead of your time because I think this is happening. No. I kept the glasses. You can still see through them, can't you? I can still yeah. see through them, yes, and I take them to every uh, Hooters I can. <laughs> uh, no, excuse me. Shame I mean, on no, you. No, 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 I'm a shame, grandpa. Yeah, shame. just teasing there now. Shame on you. Now, we're uh, downtown Los Angeles. I remember uh, these shooting days. Probably you do, too. It yeah. was... Uh, with some, we had some weather and some interesting conditions in downtown yes, Los Angeles. Like paying the gangs off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Paying yeah. the gangs off. A lot of homeless folks around. Yeah. Uh, Which I must, please, must give credit. Uh, John is the kind of guy that we needed homeless folks in, in, a, uh, in a particular scene that you'll see coming up. And so John went and grabbed all the homeless folks and fed them and got them a payday and took care of them. And so the homeless folks you're seeing in there are the real homeless folks. Yep. And uh, I, I thought that was a uh, pretty classy thing to do. I met uh, I met you uh, basically the first time I met you was at WrestleMania three in yes. Pontiac, Michigan, the biggest the biggest <laughs> wrestling event of all time. I, as I yes. think I think it's yeah. ninety ninety three thousand people right. live and whatever. It was unbelievable. Yeah, situation. Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah, and uh, you had a big suite there and. They said, John Carpenter wanted to meet me. And I, how do I look? <laughs> oh, about 40 pounds overweight. <laughs> this scene here. This is when you're in the, uh, basically the unemployment office and you're trying to, trying to get a job or trying to get some benefits and you're saying, uh, I think you want, you're saying that you're uh, basically one of the working poor. You know, you got yeah. your tools with you. You're a good man, and they they turn you down. But and and it's ve and it's very much like it is today because you get out there and they take a look at you and how you're dressed and stuff, and they don't give you a chance to get a job because of the way you look, but they don't give you a shower to clean up to get the job. <laughs> <laughs> so very true. Raymond St. Jacques oh. is the street now. He's no longer with us. He passed oh, on. What a wonderful guy. Yeah, he was a nice man. He's a very nice man. He had a long career in the business, and. Uh, he plays the the blind man who can see. There's a lot of kind of uh, really, I guess you could say, a, a slightly uh, Shakespearean uh, uh, tones. So this is like Macbeth and the witches, where where they're they're predicting the future. He's kind of uh, well. I don't want to compare this to Macbeth. He's kind of <laughs> he's kind of telling us what's going on. Otherwise, we used to drink the wine out of skulls after we were That's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> and. Uh, Interestingly enough, we uh, we opened number one uh, with this film, which was fascinating yeah. to me. I I was really and me too. Interesting it was your it was your first starring role? I I think you had done a movie before, hadn't you, Ronnie? Um, well, I had been on screen before, but I had never been with a real director. Well, done no, a real no, movie. now, no. now, no, I no, I won't pull no punches, man. I uh, uh, this is the best uh, job I've done on the screen because of the director. Uh, that's, that, sweet. that's fact. Uh, that's that's sweet. a fact. And here here I. Uh, I can remember this scene and, and trying to get used to 
uh, feeling what these, you know, I lived on the street myself. Uh, so it didn't take long to kind of get the feeling of what's going on. I'm looking and I'm seeing all the different dilemmas that are happening in all the different rooms. And you know what? That's just about what life is like, especially when you get in the burbs or the tenements or whatever country we're talking about. You know, everybody's got their own little life and they think that that's, that's it and it's all revolving. We've all got these all little lives, but nobody's helping nobody. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. that's what I think that you were trying to portray. That's absolutely here. right. And you brought a, I thought you brought an authenticity. See, I couldn't see a, uh, uh, some some polished guy. I'll say a Robert Redford. You need yeah. to have a little bit of street in you to play this role. I thought. Yeah. You need to have a little toughness. Little, little toughness. toughness. But I just like you. So now you're trying to get a job as a foreman. Uh, is telling yeah. you that there's there's no work and basically everywhere you go, you're uh, you're kind of running into. Uh, uh, dead the wall. tough times. Yeah, yeah dead wall. Yeah. Nothing yeah. to eat. And this was actually a fact of life back in the 80s. It's, it's improved mm -hmm. a great deal now, uh, but a lot of the, the safety net was was cut away and uh, and so forth. But uh, regardless of that, you know, I got pegged. Uh, I get still get pegged as cow. Oh, there you go. Now you actually are, get to show off a little <laughs> physique now, there. Let me tell you the rumor. The rumor was that you had taken my head and put it on someone else's body and that's why I got remember we trained hard for this one and people don't believe that's my body what are you talking about when I got back and I, I had to do a Wrestlemania or something the fans were saying that you had adjusted it by computer and put my head on somebody else's body no, because ridiculous. I could never look that good that's ridiculous <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> no, I, I swear to God, that's what they that was the rumor going around. Oh man, oh that's ridiculous. Now here's Keith David. He's oh, one of my favorite actors. Yeah. I first worked with him in '82 on The Thing, and subsequently on this. And he's just a terrific guy. You guys were great together. Well, you know, one thing too with Keith was, um, I was definitely not the most experienced actor here, and Keith had no problem in sharing, helping me with my scene, finding out where it was, and by the time we would get to you, you you know, you would bring the scene together, but just a sharing, sharing, terrific actor, and that's hard to find. Yeah, it is. That's hard to find. Well, you've had some, you've had quite a bit of experience now in, in uh, making got some films. and 25 films we've That's done. amazing. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. I, I want to learn how to act one of these days and make a real good one. You know what? That's <laughs> you've made more movies than I have. I've only made twenty. Uh, yeah, but you made twenty good ones. <laughs> oh no, 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 wait a minute! Not all of them. Not all. Now, now That's you, amazing, Rod. Here we're we're trying to become buddies, but uh -huh. both of us have all this pride and going on. And oh yeah, I'm not listening to him. But another, this is how people then were living. Some of them. Some yep. of them were living in in in, uh, in in little camps like this, and the, this was a part of uh, I don't know. It's a part of America that some people don't like to see. They don't want to know about it. They don't yeah. want to know about these folks. No, they don't. They, Especially they don't. the teenage. You know these teenage run these teenage homeless kids now. Oh, it's so oh. tough. No, some of them no. haven't had a chance. They're out no. there. They've been in foster homes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And it's terrible. It, it is. Uh, and so they end up in jail because yeah. nobody cares. But everybody says, gee, we should do something about that. I know. I know. And there's, there's the one, the only, Peter Jason. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's when we did this scene the first time. I think this was the first day. And so I, the first time I did it, I was a little nervous. And so after I finished the scene, he says, so where'd you get Mr. Mumbles from? <laughs> Which, you know, thank you very much. I'll well, you were up. underplaying it. You're Under, underplaying it. Thank you. That's what thank you, you, sir. You did it exactly right. Yeah. You underplayed it. <laughs> now, this is, uh, this brings back memories. We were shooting in downtown uh, L.A., but right to the uh, west of the freeway, there's still this area where we built this set. It's still there. They haven't built anything over it. You can still stand down there. This set here? This one right here with a wall there. And they've never really fixed it up. I've driven past there. And had a little nostal that. nostalgic moments looking at this area. I remember us, yeah. us out there. We shot uh, days and nights there. and uh, I have some real good memories of this movie. Yeah. Uh, I can hold you. You're chowing down there, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Eating like you haven't eaten before.
<laughs> well, you never had a real. You were never shy about about. The, no, uh, no, getting culinary from, uh, from the from the hand to the mouth. No, no, no. no. We had that down. <laughs> the, the you had us here starting to bond, and and Keith is talking about the government, and and he's talking about what they're doing to them, and and the suppression, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which was really important to the beginning of the movie, so you could understand where we were coming from, and uh, that's something I remember you telling me. Uh, about bond, the two characters have to bond together uh, to make this movie work, and uh, this is this is the scene that we worked hard on. Uh, oh yeah, and you guys, we rehearsed uh, not just the the later fights, we rehearsed the acting between the two of you. Mm -hmm. I remember one day I sent you guys out and I said to be in your character and go have lunch. Yes. And off you went, and you came back and I said, well, what happened? And you said, it was just we didn't have to say much. There we were together. We're comfortable. Well, yeah, yeah. We're real comfortable together. Yep. That was interesting. Now, this is no. a, nice, not a nice kind of backlit shot there. Beautiful shot. Now, you had an idea here, but I don't know if I can say it. What's that? <laughs> God, what was my idea? Well, the idea was, because of Americana and what was going on, that's my pitiful harmonica playing there. That song, God Bless His Soul, Jay the Alaskan York made up called the Brea Tar uh, La Brea Tar Pit Blues, just to give him credit. I remember that. You know, uh... Who was Jay? What was Jay Alaskan what? Jay the Alaskan York. He was 320 pounds, whip around his neck, lineman boots, and he'd go in and he'd say, for breakfast, I want a pound of bacon and a dozen eggs. <laughs> and I'd say, you know, can I have a Diet Coke, please, sir? <laughs> was, he, was he in the wrestler? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, he helped raise me. I, uh, really? Yeah, we fast rod together and threw buck knives. <laughs> you know, it was giving me an education. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Well, that's really cool. There's Buck Flower, the There's legendary. Buck. Yeah. Legendary Buck Flower. Now we're in our night sequences, and we begin to find out a little bit from this TV. Uh, this is uh, basically telling the truth, but it's coming through, and everything beginning to get a little headaches from it. We're kind of laying in the plot here a little bit. This movie cost uh, about four million to make. Four million. You see. Um, and what you did here, just really quickly, back in like 1954, they had a thing called the Brunswick Affair. And do you know about the Brunswick Affair? No, I don't. Brunswick Affair was a television they had. And the people would buy it, and all of a sudden, a housewife would come home with 50 pounds of dog food, and she didn't own a dog. And they would be like, Tide, I'm making the, the products up, you know, 10 boxes of Tide. And what they were doing was... Just what you had them doing here, they were sending signals out through the TV. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, and it's very, it's very in history. You look back at it, and it'll tell you about the Brunswick Affair. I'll be damned. So, and that's why we're getting headaches, and that's why, uh, that's exactly what's happening here. Uh, so very truthful. Uh, uh, very truthful. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, uh, seen MTV lately? Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, the, the, this was based on a, a short story. This whole thing, eight o'clock in the morning. But I changed it a great deal. The original short story was by Ray Nelson, and it is a guy was sitting in a, a hip, hypnosis uh, a kind of concert, and the hypnotist said, wake up, and he did, and he saw around him that these aliens were in his midst. So it was like, that's how the story started. But I thought, ah. that's kind of a, that's, we need to make it a little bit more modern, you know, yeah. and slow, make it slow it down a little. You don't want to find that out right away. too yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When the sunglasses go on, when you find it out, I also had to have a, a, a visual way of sh something startling visually. You know, and uh, John, I, a question, a burning question that's been I wanted to ask for: How did you come up with that beautiful style of sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> how did you find those sunglasses? I don't really remember, except uh. that, that you kept putting on sunglasses, and finally, that was that was the one. <laughs> well, I was with Kurt Russell at the time. And... <laughs> I don't know. It just looked really, yeah, really cool on you. It did. Yeah. It did. It did. <laughs> kind of this, uh, the old-fashioned Ray-Ban special. Ray-Ban, big horn, big horned, and yeah. uh, looks like something you'd see aliens with. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, lonely guy. Yeah. Yeah. Always walking by himself, which is pretty much the character and pretty much the truth. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit of an introvert. It's Peter Boyle. Look at him. <laughs> this gets pretty interesting here. Hey, we're taking care of a lot of people here. Hey, yeah. John, John knows something's going on. <laughs> he ain't no private eye or Columbo, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
No, I don't know about that. No, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> Just because he's a working guy doesn't mean he's not pretty sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. We are being bred for slavery. And here we go yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. Here we go again. They're pounding them with it. Yeah. Nobody knows where they're coming from. Was this, uh, this was the first, uh, uh, film that you did you what I'm trying to ask is is this the longest the first time you actually spent this much time on a movie making it yes this is the this is the highest quality uh, the most heart I've ever put in any movie of my career uh, to you know to about a year ago uh, and I'm most proud of this movie uh, because it really helped uh, you you pull things out of me that uh, I was afraid to uh, you know, people don't must understand that you got to trust a director because uh, you're saying things that you don't. It's almost like your therapist. <laughs> and uh, John Carpenter is an actor's director, oh, that's um, sweet. That's sweet. Uh, very much so, and spent a lot of extra time with me that probably wouldn't have had to with a more experienced actor. But uh, he did it, uh, and he did not have to. So now I'm here in a choir. I like choir music. Mm -hmm. I sincerely do, mm -hmm. but. Something's going to happen here that actually scared the dog right out of me. <laughs> yeah, we had that, uh, we had this tie-in here. Uh, this, this is actually right across the street from, uh, from the other location. and uh, Yeah, right from the camp. Huh? Uh -huh. And we were looking at it and looking at it, and me and my nosy self, I can't uh -huh. stand it. And we get an idea here pretty soon about there's something going on. Yeah, they live, we sleep is coming up. Yeah. Interesting slow pace in this in this beginning of this film. It's not like a lot of action movies that you see, because it's taking its time to get where it needs to go. A lot of films like to start in the first ten minutes. They want to hit you with something big, action scene, something blowing up. <coughs> this was a different gig. As you told me though, and I remember distinctly, we need to get some character development yep. in the beginning. Yep. And uh, on your part, very smart. Uh, we need to know who you are because yeah. you're not going to be playing a cliché character. You're not going to be playing uh, Steven Seagal. No, I'm not a big uh, beat-up kind of guy. No, no. Just a regular guy. Yep. So now what's going on here, guys, going? We have to face facts. Uh, well, we've got the choir music going. They're having a kind of, of a meeting of the humans, you see. The humans are meeting to try to figure out what to do. But we don't quite know what they're talking about yet. No, we're here in choir. Yeah, we think, what's going on? Yeah. So, so they're in a church, and uh, this is where they're broadcasting the signals okay, from. And so, you're kind of finding this stuff out. Well, just like when I was a kid, you know, nosier than hell. Oh, well, what do we got here? <laughs> Were you a nosy kid? Well, um, I um, was a curious kid. Were you? Yeah, Were yeah, you? I was. Uh, so, but there's a part here that is sincerely scared the dog right out of me, and you're going to see where it is. <laughs> you originally came from uh, from the neighbor to the north, didn't you, Ron? Well, I was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but I moved a different place uh, every year of my life. And I I lived in Glasgow and Australia and all over. Oh man, all over. But like right here, I know what's going to happen. It's a film, right? It's a movie. You told me, but <laughs> now what? Just a second. This thing kills me. <laughs> Scared the dog right out of me. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he grabbed me by the throat. <laughs> he's blind. Well, you know. Let me touch your face. Come on, he's blind. Then, you know, I'm okay now, but when I turned around, I didn't expect him to grab me by the throat. Yeah, you're a working man. Oh, that's yes, fun. That's yeah. fun. But the thing, you're a working man. Revolution. Yeah, yeah. You sure. to touch your hands. Yeah, I felt it. calluses. Maybe some other time, huh? Yeah, right. Uh, Raymond was great. Oh, he was a terrific actor. Yes, sir. I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed working with him. There's a lot of joy. And then back out you go. Yeah. Well, you know the interesting thing about this is a lot of actors can't carry a movie, Ronnie, and you did. It was on your shoulders the whole film. You're in everything. It's all seen through your eyes. But that's that's because I was leaning on you. <laughs> Lean on me. <laughs> the only I can only do so much. You see, you have to have it to begin with. He had to have a, he had the ability to, to do it, and, and and he did, and and it's tough. It's it's tough to carry a film like this because a lot of this is uh, uh, when you see through the eyes of the character, you're when you're building up slowly something slowly like this, you don't talk it, you don't say it in dialogue. It's how the character character reacts to certain things. 
Oh, here we got uh, some uh, yeah. helicopter action. Yeah. I was, I am a helicopter pilot, and I, this is the parts that I love, is flying around. And I never get to do it much anymore, though. Too old and too tired. <laughs> Too bad. I don't know about that. Now. Yeah. Huh? I don't know about that. Now, here, here's, I was just asking him out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. Hey, kid, what are you doing later? However, can I borrow your binoculars? <laughs> uh, Nick, Which is actually was a real good kid, that kid there. And Nick Adams' son. Nick Adams' son. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Real good kid. So now, the nosy guy, huh? <laughs> What's going on in there? I got to know. Hey. What's happening? Yeah. Oh, it's a, here it's comes a, my bud. One good thing, one thing that I'm impressed with watching it now is how how we shot uh, Los mean? Angeles. Because I Los Angeles to me has always been a really beautiful place, even though it's uh, you know it has its problems. But yes. I fell in love with it when I got here. I just love the the architecture. I love the it, it's a desert. It's a desert that we've. Uh, with water and, and freeways, <laughs> it kind of just settled, you know? Yeah, just, yeah. But on the edge of everything, it's still slightly dangerous place, uh, Yes. It's a, it's a really yeah. unique place. Very much. And that's what he's telling me right now. Mm -hmm. Mind your own business. <laughs> it's a dangerous place. <laughs> but no! <laughs> Naturally curious yeah, young yeah. guy. Worst place to drive. You had some nice hair in those days, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> nice hair. Bless your heart, man. <laughs> so it's nighttime. We're going to come up to this uh, this big uh, yeah. action scene in a minute. Yeah. Which, when shot, I know I know it looks great on the screen, but man, in living color live there with the helicopters yeah. and the things going on, it, was un it would just be like... You would expect when they come and uh, tear down one of these shanty towns. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. People, the way people were scrambling, they didn't care about the kids, the, the government, or the the authorities here. And well, let's just see what happens here for a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So first of all, the good guys are getting away, and I don't know to the good guys. <laughs> Well, none of us really know yet, do we? No, no. Man, the audience doesn't know. We no. don't know. We don't quite know what's happening. See, but that's what you do really well as a as a science fiction director and and and, and that you you stretch us on you milk us to the very last just say yeah yeah here come the cops now this was an ambitious scene for us to stage on our little budget you know yes you know we every every action scene that we had that was this size we had to really make use of it because you made uh, it work it, it, we didn't have much yeah. Made, try to make it look bigger than it was. Well, and, I think you succeeded. Yeah, it's okay. We did all right with this. We did some nice stuff. Now, I, and when as we go through here, uh, you know, as an actor, use different subtext and, uh, and uh, objectives, etc. Um, I uh, I had actually gone way back in my own life and was watching these people. Uh, we'll get to it here, and I was doing a correlation with what I had seen sometime earlier. So when you take a look in my eyes, um, I'm seeing that, but uh, I'm actually living it in my heart here. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. as as you you had helped me out and I've learned, um, yeah, this put... movie is very real to me. Maybe that's what I'm saying. Very, very real to me. Yeah. And uh, I remember a story that you told me once. I won't go into too many details. Yeah, go, go for it. About some of your friends in Fresno one night when you had some mm. encounter, encounters with the, the... How about them Cubs? <laughs> with the yes. police department and uh, an yeah. interesting story? Yes. Uh, well, we won't go into details. No, no, that. we'll do that on the next one. <laughs> Yeah, here, here comes the, the bull. Yeah, right. Yeah, bull, the, <laughs> yeah you see, so they're bull. Now, you see, take a look at the guy. He, he wants to get in it, but he realizes, man, he's seen this before. There ain't nothing. There yeah. ain't nothing he can do, and there'll be a moment where he pauses and takes a look around. And I remember flashing back and seeing, maybe not quite this violent, but seeing the same type of idea. And I, if you catch it, my eyes. Um, it was a painful scene for me to do this particular scene. Really? Two two scenes in here that were painful for me. Now, I remember the other one, but this one that's interesting. Yeah, um, and if I can just there's one, I'm right in about here, right in about here. Yeah, we uh, lit you from the helicopter. Was throwing lights all over the place. Yeah, that's what they there we go. Bright in there. Yep. 
And the two of you make a smash a connection across there. And look what Frank does, man. Watch. Oh, well, like you haven't seen it. Uh, uh, not my long. buddy, he leaves me. So where am I again? Nada. <laughs> Nowhere. With Nowhere, nothing. man. No friends, no dogs, no dupas. <laughs> so now it's time to run with a Panaglide following you. Yes, and we know that because you cannot win in that situation. No. No. And those poor people that happens to these people every day. And there's many people that have watched They Live that have commented about how the homeless were used and and commented on the situation. So you did bring a certain amount of awareness. I'm not saying we tried to we cured the world, but we brought an awareness. No, I can't cure the world. Nothing we can do. Yeah. Nothing we can do. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, kind of shades of Rodney yeah. King <laughs> before it happened. <laughs> Little Rodney no, King. Not, just a tad, huh? <laughs> Little Rodney King but action there. It, it wasn't shot quite this nice. No, no, no. <laughs> It's interesting. I hadn't thought of that now. I just thought of that now. <laughs> oh, Raymond. Getting, yeah. getting the crap beat out of him now. Yeah. So what do you do? Well... What do you do in that situation? You gotta keep moving, I think. No. You can't... Odds are looking bad. Overwhelming force. And now, that's me when I was a kid. That's what I'm thinking right there. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Get out of here, You kid. had some hard times, huh, as a youngster? Not, um, that, not that we all didn't have yeah. some hard times. But. Yeah, um, I had a, a different type of life. Yeah, yeah, well, hey. Now I, I believe we've changed locations. We're somewhere else. I don't yeah. recall where we shot where we shot this. That was a nice little little thing with the thing there as you're coming in, tipping that over. That was nice. Thank you. That was nice. Yeah. But you notice how he's clutching onto the boy? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I was consciously doing that as in acting. Uh, piece of business. I think sincerely, I was clutching on to him because that I. Was you. It was, that was me. You. Well, you were taking. And you were I, holding yourself. Yeah, and, and I just if looking back at it and yeah. I, how I'm holding them. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that was that was you and surrogate you. Yeah. Very much. I don't remember how many days we shot on this, Roddy. Do you have any idea? Um. 30, 40, 30? I. Th I want to say six weeks. Really? Is that something like that, right? Six weeks. Five, six weeks. Yeah. yeah. You're probably right. But uh, uh, we'll see the scene. And then you, you had a great philosophy you told me at the beginning that uh, uh, sums up your genius when you do these type of things and why why you are one of the best at them. I'm going to tell you in a second. Oh, that's a nice lighting on your face there. That's a little slashes of light. Yeah. See, that's a good director. We took care of you. God Took care of you. you. God bless you, man. I was in a very ugly time of my life there. Uh huh. I had been uh, wrestling nonstop every day of my life, 300 days a year. Um, and I just got out of the WWF, as we've mentioned before, not to be redundant, but I came from a different world and I did not understand this world. And so I was having a lot of turmoil inside me at the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, but, but you made the transition all right. You did it all right. You did it okay. And then there's sometimes that you were hurting too. You know, well, you get beat up when you're a wrestler. Yeah. So you get a real beat up. Yeah, you get uh, hurt and real bad. Whacked. And I had just came right out of it, so I hadn't yeah. had a period of healing. Um, but more emotionally on the head, where I think it plays into the character uh, somewhat here. With uh, confusion, the way he's at, he reacts. He doesn't react like a regular person. I don't think would mm -hmm. react. He doesn't back up when he should, uh, yeah. and he goes forward when he shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what the hell was that, Martha? <laughs> <laughs> so, it was an interesting thing to, to step uh, to step into this world. I, re I remember uh, uh, I went to some video award and uh, hacksaw Jim Duggan happened to be there. Oh. So I was chatting with him. He said, hey, man, you know, uh, Roddy did such a great job in that. That was really cool. Yeah, but, you know, John, I'm being sincere, and I'll tell them what you told me. He said to me, before we started shooting, ask me any and as many questions as you possibly can 
until the first day of shooting and I don't want to hear a word from you. <laughs> so, and that was brilliant because the confidence level as we came in was already there. Now we're coming up to a key scene here. I think pretty soon we're going to be getting into the sunglasses scene. Okay, so and I, this is one of the ones that I'm the proudest of you as an actor because you have to do something that's really difficult to do, which is you didn't through those glasses that we had, you just had to imagine what you were seeing. See, yeah, you had to make it up in your head. Yeah, and that's always it's difficult to do. It's easy when you're sitting across from an actor and they tell you by the lines what's going well, on. Well, you can react to the words. Here you got to react to something fantastic that's that's uh, really not nice. there and. Um, yeah, so, uh, what the hell is this? Yeah, sunglasses? yeah, sunglasses. How do you put this together? Now, what the hell's going on? And I remember uh, the some of the images that you see, almost all of them, not all, but some of them that you see are simply matte paintings by one of the unheralded geniuses in our business. His name is Jim Danforth. He just did some beautiful photorealistic work. By that I mean you couldn't really tell that it wasn't uh, shot someplace. Right, no. The bigger stuff, the big shots, I'll show you when you're coming up. I remember the day we shot this shooting down that street with our extras. We had one guy back there looking at you. Just, wouldn't stop. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this is uh, this is just a treating the yeah. treating the shot so it's color, black and white. We get to set mm -hmm. up the, the the convention is set up. Which was a great idea having well there. Now that's a matte painting. That's, that's not real. Painting. And he takes it off and, and that's a matte painting. And they're not real, not real shots. But he did a great job of texturing it out. Yeah. So now the audience, without words, you see, which is which is the gig. You're putting together that this causes a headache, and you're putting together another matte painting. This girl on the side of the on the side of the building. Up it goes. Mary reproduce. He did the glasses coming down again. You're setting up with the audience something that's nonverbal. It has nothing to do with words. It has to do so with you're sh telling a story without words, which international is international language. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do. I don't want to. I'm not touting myself, but it, it's a difficult thing to do to get across because you can really get lost if you're not careful. But I think one of the smartest things you did was have it black and white. Mm -hmm. The difference mm -hmm. in black. Ah, oh, I love yeah. that part of it. Yeah. Well, good luck. Now that's of course a, a matte painting, but, yeah, that's but, it, it, but it's uh, it, it tells a story. And then all the uh, the slogans were interesting. You know, there's a restaurant in uh, uh, I believe it's Washington D.C. or New York. I can't with it. That is, is decorated like this. Yeah. Uh, only like the black and white part. Yeah. No independent thought. Consume. The whole restaurant is like that. It's a bar. Oh, there is. Yeah. Go in there and get drunk. <laughs> and that's why you see those things. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know. So uh, we're, we're continuing uh, yeah. showing the audience and the main character that uh, his world has forever been changed. The world is not like you think it is. Sleep. Stay asleep, obey, buy, buy. don't question authority. authority. See, and, and, and actually, if, I must tell you, this is, I have this adolescent hatred of authority. I I've do never, too. I've never gotten over it since I was a kid. I still got it <laughs> and too. I can't handle it. Ask me for my shirt off my back, I'll give it to you. Tell me. Not a chance. Yeah, that's it. You know, uh, so a lot of this comes out of that, that uh, just hatred yeah. of, uh, of authority. Look at that. What is that? Yeah. I said, yeah. what's your problem? We were very tricky. We had to, we had to, I didn't want you to see these things too closely uh -huh. and too, too much because the minute that you, that you do it too much, okay. you're kind of screwed, but just yeah. enough, yeah. Just, yeah. En just enough of the face. Thank you, sir. We held that one because it was a little further away. Nowadays, you know, you can do special effects like this really yeah, easy, well, they, because if you have the money, they have the digital they want to computer do it. generation, but, you know. <laughs> in those days, we had to do it the old-fashioned yeah. way, which is... Uh, Jeff Amata, actually, the stunt coordinator, played every every ghoul, every everybody. He played women and men. Did he <laughs> play every ghoul? Every one, yeah. Because he could... All right, Jeff! <laughs> he could fit into the costumes. <laughs> and he, he didn't just, mind the pumps. No. <laughs> Not at all. He liked the pumps. You know, when you got 14 black belts, you can wear pumps. I don't want no half the day. Either pay for it or put it back. See, there's one of the gentlemen that you hired right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, why not? Hey. You said, well, I wish everybody thought that way. Yeah, why not? You know, but they don't. 
Yeah, we shot this. Uh, this was a, there's a lot of this stuff we did uh, after we'd finished completed principal photography. We had a little second yeah. unit that I'd cobbled together to shoot little extra shots for us. And, yeah. uh, you and you did a good job a, describing. The only thing that was difficult was really what did the aliens, what did their faces look like yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. So yeah. I had to make up in my mind uh, uh, an alien. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I made up the ugliest. I was scared of the dark big time when I was a kid. Yeah. And I made up this guy that used to scare me. And that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, it. That's See, that's what, what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's uh, scared me to death. Nowadays, you know, alien movies are kind of funny. Everybody, It's funny now, don't you think? Yeah, yeah It's yes. become like, a, like a, the Roswell stuff and all that. It's become like a joke. Yeah. But this, a, this isn't funny. No, no, no. Not at all. No. But it's real. And I think that's why uh, people adhere themselves to it. Yeah. Oh, they also like your character, and they, they just like that they get with the whole thing. We had to build this this part of the supermarket on a soundstage. Look, the, your point of views are all done later. And uh -huh. We shot you looking this way in color uh, during during uh, uh, regular production. So this was all. Now I have a built. question for mm. you that you, you you made a decision on the set, and then you said you, you that you regretted it, and I wondered today. You're gonna see me fall down, uh -huh. and when you see it, when you got, you said, Rod, what do you think? I said, okay, I'll go, and I fell down, and you'll see where it's coming up right here. And then you thought later after you saw the rushes, I it was the wrong call. I, when you see it now, I would very be interested oh, in what remember you remember. Okay, you're gonna see her pretty quick here. So you fell. Oh, you, well, was it a comedic kind of comedy moment there? Did I? Uh... It, it, as I was back, you're going to see it in about 30 seconds. See, you remember this movie better than I do. <laughs> so he's kind of now losing his mind a little bit. Yeah. And then that's I, Jeff. <laughs> that's my second wife. Yeah. Oh. Coming up, coming up here when you fell, huh? Yes. You know, I don't remember why I objected to it. I, I can't well, remember now. Okay. Because did I really think it was over the top? Yeah, you thought it made our hero. She looks like a regular person, doesn't she, huh? Put him back on. See, he's explaining to the audience now, finally, exactly what we know in words. Call the cops. Call the cops. You do his imitate his voice. This one. I thought that's all right. Well, at the time you you said do it, and then you thought maybe it made our hero look. Uh, I don't know. If, Clumsy or out of, you know. Uh, I don't know. I must have been. I must have been taking some drugs when I said that. It looks fine. <laughs> no, I had them all. Um, <laughs> excuse me. And you wouldn't no. share with me. That's what. Pissed That's me. right. <laughs> so you made me fall. That's right. <laughs> Oh man, it's just terrible when people won't share. It's a problem with the world. Yeah, I know. So now he's so, he's got a little bit different attitude now. He's, he's gonna, yeah, he's, we're gonna see this man uh, to kind of turn into a vigilante a little bit because but just imagine yourself at home. You know something, and nobody will believe you. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Have, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, have you ever been in that spot with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> you know. Oh, we get to do our uh, we get to do a clothesline here. This is fun. This is yeah. fun. I had I had never seen I had never seen that in movies except for uh, uh, I had only seen it in wrestling matches. I really uh -huh. to, there was a clothesline in uh, the Longest Yard, that old football movie. Uh, where, Burt Reynolds. Boom. Yeah. He puts puts his puts his arms out right. The Jaws guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Richard Keel. Richard Keel. So. Uh, but you did good. And the guy, the guy, the stunt man had to take what well, you, you whacked him. <laughs> I mean, it's did. hard not to hurt. It's hard not to do that. You well, know? if, yeah, yeah, if you you're into it, you can't pull it. You can't really no. pull that. Right? That's nice. God bless him. And, and we had to, we padded the street a little bit, but it was uh, here's yeah. two, two gun rod coming up here. Nice <laughs> shot you have here. <laughs> two gun there rod. You go. Nice shot. Now the only one of the criticisms I got was I shouldn't have let you be a vigilante, but you had to. I mean, you had to fight that. I was, I would. Do you, was I a vigilante, or was I trying to get somebody to believe me? What's going on here? Well, you're fighting back you're... against the aliens. That's what you were doing. And, so that uh, makes I would me too. a vigilante. Now you grab the shotgun. You, the, the one of the most famous scenes in a minute is coming up in this film, hey, which that... people remember and they remember your line. They just say something, Rod. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> 
Andy, this is something you wrote. This is something <laughs> that uh, actually you had written and I thought was just brilliant. It's something that you you'd maybe had, had planned on using. Here oh, we go. Right, that's right. Yeah, you'd planned on using it at one time, and I thought, you know, this is great. Nobody else would we say something like this. You had that little book we You had the book that you let me see your material, and it was great. I thought, this is perfect. <laughs> I have come and it kind of came emblematic uh, of you and, and, and the movie. movie. Yeah. But Fascinating. And I'm all interesting. out of bubble gum. Oh. Which is interesting. When, when we're, we were doing it, I never thought that that line would... I mean, I wasn't doing that line because it was going to be, what does Schwarzenegger said, see you later, baby. I never did that line, or you never had me do that line as a, going to be the line of the movie. So it's like, you never know. You never know what's going to catch on. No, you never know. And I, I saw, you know, I happened to tune in a few years ago, and actually you used that in a, in a, in a wrestling deal. It was that kind of did a theme, I? yeah. It was cool. It was cool. That, I plagiarized it on that game. No, no, you I? plagiarized <laughs> yourself. You can do that. It's you. <laughs> so uh, we continue on. Yep. Now there's a man alone against the world for a while here, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. Now man John alone. Schneider is the one who told me how to cock the shotgun, just so you is know. Is that right? Yeah. As I come through, I said, how do I do it coolly? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little, <laughs> little animated uh, deal there. Yeah. And, and uh, you blow it away. Hey, listen, man. I would do the same thing if I was in if your character in your shoes. I'd be, I'd be doing all of this, all of this. I'd be yep. crazed. We have a little adventure here in a minute with. Uh... Now, do you remember this? Mm -hmm. I said, drop it. Hey, uh, okay. You don't remember the first take, do you? No. What was it? Tell me. Okay, so the man comes out now. And you Beat hear what? Feet. Beat your feet. I say to him, right? Yeah. He takes off. This first take. His interpretation, when he beat, beat, beat your feet, he started running on the spot. <laughs> you remember? No, he, remember? remember he started running on the spot like <laughs> And I didn't, I mean, he was trying his heart out. No, no, that means leave. That means oh, I've forgotten that. Do you remember? Beat he, your feet. Beat oh, your feet yeah. and he started running on the spot. Oh, no. God bless him. He was, his heart was into it big time. He just. Here's Meg Foster entering the movie. Meg was yeah. a terrific actress. Uh, I really enjoyed working lady. with her. And then she's uh, and can hit you with a bottle. <laughs> well, <laughs> she does. <laughs> and you guys did good together. It's kind of a clash between two worlds. She's the upscale girl, and, yes. and you're the working guy. And yeah. And unfortunately, uh, uh, you need her to get away at this point. So we released this in. Uh, oh, Brother, I believe it was the fall of 1988. 88, I believe I fall, the fall, fall of yep. 88. Yes, fall of 88. Trying to get it close to Halloween. Yeah, fall of 88. And uh, that was a that was a while ago. What was it 12? It's been 12, 13 years now. Has it been that yeah, long? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, you know what? You don't look a day old. Wait, right? that's great. Right. I know the truth. <laughs> I know the truth. Age is a funny thing. Yeah. It's a funny thing. All these young kids don't understand that. No. I, I talk to them and complain about how old. Yeah. I, and I said, you're not going to know until you get there, pal. No. You know? And you're not going to believe me right now. No, either. you know, no. not a word I'm saying. <laughs> you say, ah, what the hell. <laughs> so, you know what, what bug, bugs me is that it just gets harder physically, uh, uh, harder and harder to make films because of the... Get the the work, the pounding that you take. I just, just as you're older, you get the tougher it is. Yes, uh, more recoup time. Yep, you know you need. Yeah, yep. it's yeah. not like the old days. You used to be able to just go, man. Just grind them up. Yeah, so well, like you, you said you fought. I mean, three hundred days a year. Come on. I mean, it probably was easier in the beginning, and then it got harder and harder. A lot easier. Now I, I've had over seven thousand pro fights that hold the world's record. Seven thousand. Uh, seven thousand. Uh, closest to me is Flair with five thousand. Ric Flair. Um, and now it's like seven thousand. My 7, God. Seven thousand. Yeah. To get in there one time now is a, is a strain. You know, where I just jump in there before. But it, doing it for doing it all every day of uh, all year long. Well, that's just it's brutal. That's yeah. brutal. Yeah, and it it, it uh, twists you, twists you big time. Uh, yeah. But you know that's another. That's a different world, though, in terms of uh, of that whole thing. And I think nowadays, actually, in in some ways, a lot of people they still don't quite understand. No, but you know, it, to simplify it for them, my sport, wrestling, professional wrestling, has the highest suicide rate of any sport in the world. Is that right? Yeah, just lost another one just two three days ago. 
uh, without getting down here. <laughs> but um, no, that's just the truth. That's yeah, right. it's that's all right. It's truth. Uh, uh, here with Meg. Uh, we shot this near where I live, up in the Hollywood Hills, yeah, in a nice, yeah, nice area. Yeah. I've been hit by Andre the Giant softer oh, than you what you're going about to right. see here. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> did she hit you hard? Well, oh, now you're giving it. That was deep, John. Oh. That was deep. Actually, as I recall, once she hit you and the bottle didn't break. And it was yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, Ow. did it hurt? Did it hurt? Ow. No, no, oh. it didn't hurt. <laughs> I, the the guy who did the stunt uh, was the who, who did the flying flipping ah, out was the one who took name. he took a big one. Boy, I don't remember. He took a big he one. Was, uh, Sweet, uh, uh -huh. He was Arnold Schwarzenegger's double also, and he was a friend, and he really wanted to. Yeah, oh yeah, he really, put out oh big time. That's a big one. That's a big hit. I swear to you, we're being but, controlled uh, by these things. I don't know what they are. Now, this is interesting, interesting <laughs> sequence. Now, the whole the whole style of the lighting and the whole everything has changed because. We're not, you're now in a different world, you see. You're up I'm in, in the, her world. Yep. It's a whole different situation. It's not the gritty streets anymore. Yeah, yeah. you see, now that, that takes an experienced director there. Well, uh, I don't know about that. Oh, yeah, I do. I don't know about that. I do. But, uh, now, of course, I'm looking up at those green eyes. <laughs> uh -huh. Her eyes are unbelievable, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're amazing. Emerald Forest. Yeah. She's just... And she's got... They're unusual. They just draw you in, so... Yeah, and... So, uh, so I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> nah. It's not my way. And she's a uh, was a very very sweet person. Ah, I really oh, dug her. I really dug not her. Not a problem. That ready to do anything. Discuss yeah. it with yeah. you. How can it work for you and yeah. etc. Yeah. You know. And you notice right here, I got no idea watching the movie right now as a, as a fan that uh, this lady's about to club me. She yeah. uh, Because she's playing it, so she sits down there, she folds her hands, you know, so it just goes to prove never fight with a woman. <laughs> you cannot win. Oh, I tried no. it with Tawny Katane. No. <laughs> like, boy, oh boy. Is that true? You can never fight with a woman? Is that true? I can't. I I got I'm marshmallow man. Oh, uh, a guy, yeah. give me any any guy, but not not a woman. Huh? Well, my wife oh. beats me all the time. Does she really beat you up, huh? Whack, no, whack, whack. Well, well, no, no. Just, but she wins. She call, She just does this. She goes, Roderick, you're being a real jerk. Oh, so, thank you, honey. I'll go to bed now. <laughs> so here she's playing so in. She's being so innocent and so to me right now. Uh, she's not a threat to me. Uh -huh. would, would you like some wine? That'll help kill the pain. Mm -hmm. You know. And she just slips in. And she's not tipping anything off. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to be here. Huh? Yeah, we shot. This was this was the near the end of our schedule, Roddy. As I recall, we hit. Uh, these interiors and a few exteriors right near the very end yes, of the sir. shooting. I yes, believe, sir. I remember. That's right. Absolutely. I remember that. I was happy to be finished with it because it was... A, yeah, it was a tough one, John. All the night stuff and the day stuff and it, it went on and on. Yeah. And all the drama and stuff. Uh, oh, that was a piece of cake. Hey, uh, it was nothing. I've had... I had worse. I had worse, yeah, let me tell yeah. you. I won't mention any names, but I've had no, worse. No, no, no. I had being, tougher ones. We're just being honest. No, this, when I look back at the, here we go. Okay, you got to get this. So like, wham, boom. Oh, oh, that's the third oh, turn. Now look oh, at this guy. Oh. Look at this guy go. Watch him hit. Oh, man. Yeah, he did it. Oh, he was, he, you know, stuntman. That was a big fall. That was a big, big fall. Like off the top of a cage. Now look at this. This is where. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You. I'm still not sure watching the movie whether she's against me or uh, not. But Holly, and she look at how she plays it. She's just so even and and, yeah. and working those eyes on you. Oh, big yeah. Man. yeah. So now the the you're hiding in the part of uh, of the Hollywood Hills that no one really sees. But I since I live up there, we it's the underneath the houses. It's very strange. Yeah, it's a strange place. Yes. Underneath is not quite like the inside. Some of these little no. still houses. <laughs> no, I still have quite. those glasses. Do you really? Yes, sir. I do. do I bought about two pairs, probably. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. They're they're really cool. They, they act. They were. They were. Now that's coming down my street. Actually, I live over there. On the, on yeah, the that's side coming of, down your street. Yeah, it is. It's coming down. Coming down Hollywood. To, we're up well, on Franklin shooting not, down. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got through rid of a stalker. Oh, I, did you? Oh uh, yeah, two years stalking my family, gun runner. 
Oh my God. We'll, we'll, we'll continue. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, it's been. A now the one thing that that uh, John that you and I agreed on is, uh, we touched on earlier, but with this hero, he hurts, and the more he gets beat up, well that that there, the more he gets beat up, the more people are going to feel for him, rather than being this tough guy. That gets sold for me to watch. I'll name names. Van Damme, I have nothing against the guy, what he does, but you know, you'll go through this scene and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you'll have this big fight that means nothing and the big kicks, and the fight means nothing because the fight doesn't do what we did here. The fight matches the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to ruin the rest of the story here when we get to it, but there's a reason for this fight. And uh, whoever came up with the idea was, the best part about it was, it was a fight between, we decided, Two friends. Yes. Oh, yeah. And that put a whole other context on it. Yes. And uh, we'll, we'll yep. get to it here. Well, it's uh, it, it was the also you can look at it any number of ways. You can look at it as here's the friend trying to show the other friend exactly what reality is. Yeah. Here is the white man trying to tell the black man yeah. who's oppressing him. You can yes. see it in a whole number of ways if you want. Very much so. Yeah. I just took it very uh, basically simple. Keith, it just played itself. Keith's character, just I just I just don't want to be involved with you, your trouble. Right. You're reaching out to him saying, take, come on, let, let me show you the truth. Nobody see you. And that's the way I took it. I've had a rough couple of days. You can see Keith's great actor. I don't want nothing to do with he's, Keith. He's, he's, he's terrific. How many people did you kill? He's terrific. Not he's also a wonderful guy. Crazy like, son like, of a bitch. I gotta show you something. No, you ain't he did a great me. job in a, in a science fiction movie called Pitch Black. Was released a couple of years ago. It was really good. He played a he played a uh, uh, basically a mullah a black, a black, like a black man. You no, know, you know he played a a priest almost. It was really bizarre. I, I, he was great. I love him to death. And he's also in Platoon, wasn't he? No, I don't know. He might have been. Okay, we're getting near okay. the we're getting near this. Uh, yeah. So this now this guy's thing. now now the he's getting pissed off. I mean, you know, now, nobody's believing him. He's got the dog kicked out of him by a woman. Where are the glasses? Yeah, boy. No. Yeah. Dumpster diving again. I thought I stopped that when I was twelve. Oh. <laughs> you know. Here we go. This is an interesting shooting. This I I was in the inside on that hookup when you <laughs> fell out. It's an interesting place to be well, in there. But you were making sure it wasn't getting hurt. Because yeah. you remember you saying to me, hey, you can slip down fast on these cardboards that you had there. And so you had me rigged up real good. Uh, <laughs> See, I get... Do you I know get... what dumpster diving is? Yeah, well, sure. Well, like when I was 12, I did a lot of dumpster diving. So this, uh, again, you know, you hit home a lot with this. But we talked a lot, didn't we, John? Yeah. We did. We got we got to be fairly, fairly well. We got to be close before I even finished the script. We talked a lot yeah. about what we wanted what to was, do, what, yeah. what the kind of movie and the kind of character we wanted to play that you wanted to play. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, here's and the direction we're gonna go. You know, and that was the that was the important thing. There you are, coming out of the <laughs> my dumpster. The... <laughs> Chinese food today. Ooh, uh -huh. <laughs> I got my glasses. Oh, he left all that trash. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. You know, well, he's littering. a city worker, you know? Littering. <laughs> this terrible littering situation. <laughs> yeah. Here. Okay, now all we're right. about to start uh, one right. of the great fight scenes in, in movie history. I go that far to say I think it's... Uh, because I think, look, it's a real fight. It's oh, not, yeah. it's not a... Uh, it's not a flashy fight in terms of uh, no, you sure. guys don't have kung fu going, you don't have martial arts, you're not flying through the air. No, you're just going at it. Two two rounders. Yep. And stay away from me. I'm telling you, you've done something. Ow! Ow! First stop. No. Now I'm, I'm going to brag on on you now because you guys rehearsed this fight a uh, oh, month and a half, two months, two months uh, in my backyard. In your backyard, a long a long time. On and on and on and on. Yeah. And you had it down. You guys are making contact in this fight, and I'm really proud of both of you for being. You trusted by that point. You knew what you were going to do. Trusted each other. Yep. And you knew how to how to pull it off. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. spent three days in this alley with you guys. And and you set up. I think you set up three three different diff cameras. Sometimes I did. Uh, and uh, to get everything we needed. And you uh, you went right at it. You both uh, 
You both understood. And you know, Keith is not a he's not a fighter. He's a dancer that hits like Ernie Shavers yeah, and he does not. He's great. He's great. He came right into you really helped helped him uh, helped him figure it out. I remember as we get going, I don't I'll tell you in a second so when you can I don't want to fight. Stop it. No. Yeah, we uh, and and the thing is, it's almost a, a, a real long the fight in mean, ten minutes. Real, it's almost that long. So, but didn't you cut some out of it? You had to cut it down some. Uh, Not too much, man. I, I used every piece of footage we had except the mistakes when we missed. Yeah, when yeah, I could see certainly, the, certainly. When I see the misses on camera, some of the some you of the really it, yeah. hard hits, but no. Now, I like this part very much. <laughs> the uh, lift up and the yeah, and then involved. <laughs> Get away from me! Yeah. And it, that, you're right about you're right about what makes this fight interesting is that it's it's between two people who really do like each other. Yeah. And it's oh. it's going to show here in a second in one part we, we you had us do. Um, just give it a second. I'll put the darn glasses on, yeah. would you please? Am I asking too Take much here? <laughs> put them on. You're looking a little bloody there, dude. What's going on here? <laughs> Oh no! Ah, please! Then that black. Oh, oh. oh God, that's hilarious. <laughs> Over a pair of sunglasses, I know. right? I know. Two friends. Two stubborn guys, I would say. Let me put it that way. Okay. Now here, I'll tell you really quick. We were going, going, and every once in a while, Keith would miss and catch me. And right here, I said, Keith, you're killing me. Just hit me. Hit <laughs> me, and it, and away we went. It's you know it's hard it's hard to do it that fast, my friend, yes. because you're when you you know it's hard not to not to hit. It really is. Of course, you know that hell. Well, how am I telling yeah, you? Yeah, but oh, for Keith, ow. oh yeah. Oh, wow. Splashing around, you biting see? the guy, <laughs> but you son of a gun! Bang, bang. Which our hero keeps getting the dog kicked out of him. That's what I like. That. We love that, though. Everybody yeah, loves that. I Everybody like that. Love yeah. it. Whack your hero a bunch of times. Yeah. Oh, it's getting it's getting mean. It's <laughs> getting a little mean. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. yeah, you know, haven't wow. had a kid since then. Oh, <laughs> Good thing I got all my work in before wow. then, you know. <laughs> so now this especially where it shows about the friendship part. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm coming out there with a two by four, and I'm mad. And all of a sudden, he gets the bottle. Yeah. And what is he gonna do? He's gonna come after me. And then I go, What am I doing? He's my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> and you laugh. Well, and pisses him off. And, it, and here we go again. <laughs> but I didn't want to kill you. Just put the sunglasses on. That's the charm of the fight, I believe. I believe you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, uh, well, it's one thing. Look, it's one thing when you have a fight against an obvious villain. That's, that's different. okay. It's easier. Yes, oh, much it's easier. easier. And the style of the fight changes. But it's it's different when you have these two men have a relationship and they have a connection between each other. Yeah. And then that's what you established at the beginning. So yep. this works. Yep. <laughs> I believe we do. Uh, we end. We kind of end this with a uh, souffle, suplex. As, uh, I, as yes. I, yes. And as you demonstrated, you asked me one night when we were uh, at the valley office. You said, "Okay, what kind?" And you started doing it on me. <laughs> from here, from here. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> I got the idea. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Any one of those will work. Thank you. <laughs> Whichever one you want. <laughs> No, it's fun. You got to, you showed me a couple of uh, uh, of wrestling things, which were really fun to see. The, getting out of the headlock was interesting. Ah, yes. I never thought of that one before. <laughs> so it's a it's basically a gut yeah, wrench, isn't it? Bang. Yes, yes. Gut wrench. Now that that's a painful move, even for Keith with padded up and stuff that we just did. Yep. He trusted me because easily break your neck there if I don't get you up high enough. Plus, when you land, I don't care. It's 225 pounds landing on concrete there. Yeah. So he was a real game guy, man. That hurts. It, it, hurts. Hurts. it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It does. It hurts. And then look. Yeah. And now, now, finally, you made your point. I got an ally. Uh, 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 uh. Thank no, you, that's God. what you've been talking about. Like what I also love is following this fight, we see the two of you 
walking down the street, and you're still carrying a little of the fight with you. you know, yeah, and that was you. Yes, yes. When we come up to the guy, you're still a little, little we're raw so from the. Up. Oh yeah, you're still a little raw. But now, and my one of my favorite lines: uh, uh, "Life's a bitch and she's back in heat." And <laughs> Randy Macho Man Savage loves that line. Does he? He uses it all the does time. Does he really? Yeah. And every once you go, he'll go to me. He says, "Well, here, here we are coming to things." Yeah. Says, and you still have a little hostility, <laughs> even though you're together. There's still a little edge to it. Look, look, the, the mouth is so swollen uh -huh. on me, and I'm, the hero is way more beat up, <laughs> which is great. So now we're going to come in and say hi to the clerk. <laughs> Couple of real regular guys. <laughs> is Randy still uh, working or is he? Is uh, he is Randy Savage is, uh, no, he's just staying on the beach right now. Good for um, him. Yeah, yeah. He oh. put in his time, boy. Woo Big time, huh? Big time, yeah. After a while, those, uh, those, those jump leaps have got to just start killing you. Those leaps on your hips, I mean, you're losing, off the... Losing, you got to. You're losing bones, you're losing... You're losing bones, you're losing your mind, you're losing your body. It's gotta hurt. I mind. mean, it's just gotta drag you down big time. You, you know what it does? It makes you not care about your own safety and health, which is a very dangerous man. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, not if, good. if you're going to fight somebody that doesn't care about themselves, hard guy to beat because there's yep. nothing that you gotta kill them. Yeah, that's, in, that's not in good. Fi figuratively. That's not good. Figuratively. Yeah. That's for oh, you, Ephelus Sibylus Jr. Hey, you don't look so good there, pal. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Eight last man. Just did that run in Chicago and... <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a little set that we uh, we put together. That's another map. Hey, we put a little, together yeah. a little set for you guys to shoot this. Uh... Now, this is the head mo scene I, I loved, loved and hated the most. Yeah, yeah, I hear um, it. And you had to work with me a lot on it. And looking back at it, I wish I could do it again because... I think I could do a lot better job of it, but um, it is what it is. I thought it was real. How? What do you want more than real? Um, do you know what I mean by that? How can yes, you do sir. better than real? Yes, sir. Uh, <sighs> delivery. Oh, come on, man. I mean, that, the, what, it, all you need is authenticity. You don't care about perfection. Yeah. Authenticity. You know that? Yeah, I thought this was you. I felt this, though. I felt that. I felt that I was over the top. Ah, oh, you're all right. Oh, you were fine. You got to finally explode. You've been yeah. holding it in for so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You got to emotionally explode on him a little bit. It's like, God. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been so controlled, and, and, and you are the one who's been look, put upon. Look at his face. Yeah, look at mine. I know. <laughs> He's the dancer. I I'm a world champion. <laughs> But I think I think the scene that we're talking about and coming up when you're yeah. when you're talking, hard scene for me. And uh, it, here it is. it is, and it's uh, you were it, it was tough, but only because I think you uh, had to open up a little bit. That's all. I was hard. pretty scared too. Yeah. Um, well, you'd never been asked to do that in a movie before. In hey, front man, of somebody. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Cameras rolling, crew is standing yeah. there. And it's not easy. It's not easy to do. No. No, I was proud of you. Uh, I was only I, from our discussions. It. Uh, before uh, we made the movie, when we were getting to know each other, that I came up with this idea, not from any personal thing that happened, but I came mm -hmm. up with it from uh, some of the things you tell me about, you know, the, yeah. the, the being on the streets and the tough upbringing. I thought, well, why not try this? And uh, you did great uh, with it. Well, I'm glad you did because it gave the characters humanity. Yeah. Human yeah. quality. You know, we see the tough guy, but he's but he underneath you get to see well, you know, he's got his pain. That John, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I think I could have got opened up a lot more and showed a lot more pain. I still think that you're I'm being too tough there. Yeah, oh, you think so? Yeah, but you know, that's you know, I'm never happy. Hey, it's thirteen years down the line, dude. God hey, bless you. Hey, yeah, you know? I got you. He's Every up. movie I see, I think, oh, I wish I'd done, <laughs> done that, that. Di different. Yeah. I could have done that better. I could have yeah. could have structured this a little bit differently. Yeah. What was I thinking that well, day? That, yeah, you know, yeah. God, what was wrong with me? And you had talked to me for about an hour straight before I did this mm -hmm. scene, and you wouldn't let anybody come around mm -hmm. me, and you really protected me. Hey man, that's not much different than what Brando and and, the, and those folks were doing in the fifties when they were making movies. They really, that's method. They really needed that time to yeah. gather themselves, to get into it, and, and do it. And somebody you can trust. That's a whole secret. 
you know, somebody if you, you can't know trust your director. It's going to catch you if you fall. Let yeah. you let go ahead, make a mistake. I won't let it get. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt you. I'm, I'm not going to let you be the brunt of jokes. And you know what? I'm going to stop you if it ain't working. So, and I'm going to do it again. So I won't make it an egg on your face. Right. And in my business, you don't trust many people. Yeah. So yeah. it was pretty cool. Um, I did have. I I tell you, I had 100% trust. In yeah, I worked out. Oh, yeah, I worked out. And, I, you know, at, look, you guys actors, look, you actors, look, you, you get up in front of a camera and you expose yourself all the time, one way or the other, and rejection is right around the corner for an actor, oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Actors go out and to try to meet for a meeting, oh, I want to do this movie, rejection. Uh, yeah. Reject. Okay. Well, it's painful, dude. It's terrible. After a while. After it a while, really it hurts. really, yeah. It, it hurts. It, Just like getting hit in the ring and falling hurts, it hurts emotionally. So Maybe more. No, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. You know, uh, sometimes. So my job is to uh, try to make it easier easier for you. Well, that, comfortable. I, comfortable. I, I suppose maybe babysitting would have been the word. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever you had to do, you knew what, uh, you knew me uh, at that point well enough yeah. to keep everybody away from me. I'm not a people person. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were looking out a window, and the set was behind us. And you, other than Jeff Ramada, we were talking about another scene. You stayed away, and then you just started talking to me and talking to me and talking to me. But you didn't make a point of it. You didn't say, "Okay, let's talk about this." You just kind of slipped into it. And oh, are we ready? Okay, let's do the scene. And big time help. Oh, cool. Well, I enjoyed uh, one of the fond memories I have of you and I personally was sitting watching wrestling together. I've been a wrestling fan yeah. since I'm 12, 13 years old. I've always God bless dug you, it. man. <laughs> I used to go. Uh, I used to watch matches in Nashville, Tennessee, and sure. my, saw all the saw all the old timers and. I even wrote a column for the Ring magazine. The old How old were you when you did that? Fifteen. That is sensational. I would go to the matches and I would, you know, report. Do them. you ever have any of those left? Oh, somewhere. Oh, geez, yeah. they're, they're collectors. I remember when Freddie Blassie came through the South, and I guess he was on a tour fighting uh, the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, you know, he was fighting uh, Tex Riley, an old timer who finally passed away. But uh, I actually got to see. Uh, Oh, oh, God, what was his name? The, he's still teaching. He's one of the most George famous. George Animal Steel? No, even older than that. Champ from way oh, long ago. Um, I can see his face. He was on the documentary uh, that they did recently. Uh, um, oh, Jake, not Jake. Um, they did three people, Brett, Jake, and... Shoot, that oh, other guy. But he was an old world champion, actually from the 40s. Oh, oh we're talking way back. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't. Way back. Yeah. Oh yeah. He here, here now. We're all, we're all, uh, in, in, in the story. We're all kind of getting on the same side here, and we know that we are definitely outnumbered, but. I don't, I don't really want to, yes, I will use this. Um, we had a terrible thing September 11th, and I have so much pride for those people in that fifth plane um, of the heroics that they've done. I don't mean to compare it to this at all, but in the same sense, this right here, we're doing the same thing. We've got a problem, and a few of us, only a few of us know about it, and we're willing to put our lives on the line, and that's America. Yeah, oh yeah. That is America. So I, I, I see that much the same as this oh, cool. to, uh, you know, obviously a lesser extent. We didn't have all that much time down in this set, as I recall. No, we, we were moving fast here. Pretty quick. Yeah. We had to do a lot of dialogue. We had and, to then, do the scene, and then we had to have the big action boom, scene. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. And I only had a, a limited amount of time. That's what happens when you make a a lower budget film is that mm -hmm. you can't spend days on every scene. you got to make it quick and you got to Call your shots. You got to know where you need to be close. Know where you need you to be wide. You knew what you wanted. When well, you knew what the next shot was, and you kept them moving. Now sometimes you make mistakes. That's the problem with it. No, you that have was to my live. job. <laughs> you have to live with the mistakes that yeah. you make. <clears throat> now Pete gives his big speech here, yeah. which. Um, I remember something about him uh, he asking me a question, acting question. I just did, uh, sat here with Pete yesterday doing another movie we did together. And he's uh, unbelievably funny. But he had a pro some problem with this particular 
uh, exposition. Exposition is hard for actors. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's just hard to give the information out. Yeah, and not... Because it's not emotional, it's hard, it's not conversational, it it's there. like yeah. X, Y, Z, A, B. This is where we yeah. are in the story. Yeah. But he did a great job. He but he, great. he, he, he didn't terrific. like his performance here, is that what you were saying? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, I had to, I had to do the same thing. You see, now like, I'm going, I think he's great. I know, but Pete, you're doing great, don't relax. Every actor has the same problem. You all are the same. You gotta understand that. You all yeah. feel the same way about your work. How you felt earlier about yeah. that one scene, yeah. every actor feels that way. I have so never seen an you, actor. Would you call that insecurity or would no. you want a perfection, trying to reach uh, it's perfection? Call, I'm calling it uh, part of the, part of the uh, profession of acting. I've trying never, to do the never best you can. seen an actor that I've worked with ever say, you know, I did a great job. Every one of them has said, I could do better. Every single actor. And that's something that yeah. I feel. Every one of you. I feel the same yeah. way. And I, I very seldom watch myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like to watch myself yeah. much. Um, so that's why they have this plastic bag here beside me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's interesting yeah. because you, you have a you have a, a tear, an interesting tear in you as you, as you love to act. Oh, I love it. But you don't really like to watch yourself, and that's fascinating. No, and that's I don't watch myself wrestling. You don't? don't? No, sir. No, I... That's interesting. I wonder why. I don't You're like too myself. You're too critical? I don't critical like of myself. Yeah. Well, see, there you go. I don't like You're myself. You're hypercritical of yourself, and that's that, that you can know. be... But see, that can be destructive for an actor. you got to let go of that for a while, Some at some point. Some point. You can't be eating well, yourself up because... Yeah. Of, yeah. I'm, as, as I've aged, you know... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, here, mm -hmm. this, and this was shot great because, like you said, we didn't have no time, yeah. And there was smoke and stuff going around. The only thing that I, I got a gun. All right, John's give me a gun. Finally, <laughs> finally. He takes the squibs and go down. People are dying right and left, yeah. and we're firing yeah. and shooting. Yeah, it's looking good too. Look, mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's big. That's big looking. Man. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't have much time for this. this no, was, sir. I believe we did this uh, one did, night. Yeah, and we did it one night, and we had to do a little bit of dialogue first. Yes, sir. So uh, everybody's moving around and firing and shooting. Yeah, it turned out good. Well, and then we now we get behind a, a, in an alley that gets interesting. See, you remember this much more than I do. I much more than. I do. <laughs> But I have a tendency to do that when I make a movie. I, I completely try to forget it. It's over. Every, on everything the next is one. done. Everything is finished. I don't yeah. want. Oh yeah, this sequence. Oh yeah. I remember mm -hmm. this. Back behind the cans there. Okay, you go. Yeah. Now this was. Uh, uh, you guys are using full loads in this. Is that, yes. is that correct? We're using full loads, and uh, uh, one of the things were, uh, you know, in a gun battle. On I, I have learned on the cinema. There, you know, you can look like you really don't know what you're doing, or you can make it look like a gun battle, like a gun battle should. And in real gun battles, uh, you hide a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you put the thing over top, and and uh, oh, this. how would you know? Oh, well, oh, I read it in oh, National oh, Geographic. Of course you did. Of course yes. you, did. <laughs> you wouldn't. And that's the only way you'd know. I know that. And uh, <laughs> I, I got you. No, I got uh, you. I, I, I was, you've I heard saying, about it. You've heard about it. I've I heard. I read the articles and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got you. But now here, yeah. Here's where the first really cool thing happened. <laughs> yeah, well, if I remember this now, this was the transport device. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And we right, hadn't known right. nothing about it. Yeah. I didn't know nothing. These geese going, um, uh, Frank's going. Get set to sweat. Get set to sweat. <laughs> And here they come, oh, and we're in trapped. Trouble. We're... But you find a way, a kind of a magical way out, which is a uh, a kind of transport device. And, and isn't that the way it goes, what's that? I don't know. Oh, good, we've got 27 coming. What is that? Let's just go. Do you remember us jumping down that hole? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm trying to get my arms through it. <laughs> well, it's not that big, you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> and yeah, I, I've got that Santa Claus thing going on. <laughs> you're a big guy. It's hard to... Both of you. Neither of you were. He's bigger than I am. There you go. Oh, but it was so cool. Now it's really getting... Yeah. You know, it's really starting to crack, that the action part. And we're also going to go behind the scenes to show, uh, you know, basically the setup of the aliens. Now... We were under these these tunnels that connect. Uh, they're underneath Where Los Angeles. They? 
Well, you know, they connect various city buildings, okay, municipal buildings. They're used oh, okay. to go in between, like City Hall and the courthouses and police. And I've never seen it in a movie before. I'd never seen this location. It was interesting. No, uh, but it was hallway galore. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> and a lot of that's just now, kind of lit natural light down there uh -huh. because we had to light you uh, guys up close. But we couldn't light that hallway any more than this. Okay. No. And there you get a little alien writing uh, situation yeah. there, whatever that was. And uh, we had more made-up stuff, and down you go. Those are big hallways. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. was an improv in here, too, on a gunshot. See, you guys, you remember much more than I do. It's, it's <laughs> oh, I just wrote the book, so I had to. <laughs> I don't remember it all. Oh, Lord. Now, that makes me so sad. I can't, I can't remember how many de so many details. Nah. Here's an interesting scene. So now we go. He comes in and wipes the camera, and then you come out of it, out of yeah. black. And now we're in the, the, the Biltmore downtown, which has been used a hundred million times in movies, but still, this is a... Not by these folks. These, <laughs> exactly. This is one of those scenes where uh, it's kind of the meeting of the aliens and the rich. <laughs> but what's humorous here is, although they have their backs to us and stuff, here's two of the rum dumbest guys you've ever seen. They're all in tuxedos, and... They don't seem to notice us. And you're hiding your guns there. <laughs> and we're hiding our guns, right? You're walking to the buffet. And trying to blend in. And blending in. Yeah, but they is. do have our backs to us, so we can justify that. I can. <laughs> well, that was a little push, but... Ah, yeah. That's the fun hey, of what it. The hell. That's the fun of it. By this point, you know, by this point in the film, with what... There's Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I decided we have to pull the stops out here. We know we can yeah. go beyond what... That's a little bit yeah. beyond what might be realistic because... Yeah, but isn't that with the magic of movies? Well, sometimes it is. You know, yeah. Sometimes it is. I remember I, I remember one... one uh, we had a preview in... in uh, I believe it was on City Walk at Universal. We showed the movie and we were outside afterwards. I remember this one kid came out and he had, of course, been brought up with his Rambo films, right? Oh, sure, sure. Right? First Blood. And yeah, all that, all those. And he came yeah. out, and I remember he was confused about the meaning of the movie, about the money part, about it being the money. I could see it in his eyes. He was expecting ah. it to be jingoistic and, and rah-rah and yeah. good guys. And, and, he, and it, was, it had bothered him a little bit. I wanted to go over to him and say, well, you know, but I, I yeah, left it alone. Yeah, yeah. That's his reaction. That's interesting. You know, everybody has a different take on it. On this. Um, yeah. yeah. Especially this film. I get so many different comments on this film. What do they say to you? They, they say things like, uh, well, you know, they, the obvious, like, you know, uh, we love the film. That's the first thing they say, always. They tell me that it's a huge cult classic. Mm -hmm. um, they say to me... Those sunglasses and aliens, man, they were freaky. And it, it, it is. And I'm just trying to, right off the top of my head, get different things. But they really got off on the idea, what are these sunglasses? What are these sunglasses? And then when they saw the alien, it's like, whoa, that really grabbed them. Really grabbed them strong. They didn't expect to see that. And they thought uh, that you, I put your head on a on another person's They thought body? that they, you put my head on a bodybuilder or something when I was doing that scene to make me look good. You know I don't what I mean? get that I, at all. Four o'clock every morning, I was in the sun. I would like to just strangle. <laughs> but well, maybe you say you do. You look thinner on TV. You don't. You know. Yeah. People don't realize how how you're built. They really don't get it until they're uh, up close. But you know, they were. I was now. Here's something interesting that you. Actually, John, you have paved a huge road. I was the first wrestler ever in history of wrestling to star in a major motion studio picture that became number one box office of the weekend. Uh -huh. And that paved the road and gave the itch to I don't know how many wrestlers. And not one of them to this day has put out a, a quality picture like this and not one of them has had a number one hit like well, this. That's you know that, but but you have to do the right thing with a lot of the guys. Like Hulk did a couple pictures. Yeah, he tended to play himself. Yes, and you played somebody else. See, that's well, the secret. Now, here's you something do probably I've never told you. Um, Vince McMahon Jr. Uh, 
That's the one who's running it now, right? Yeah, now, yeah, exactly. The WWF. I was hired by his daddy, but when he didn't want me to do this movie with you at all. Yeah, I And that. he said, he said through a lawyer that I was doing the one time, he said, you tell him that Hulk Hogan and Roddy, uh, uh, we were called the franchise at one time, Hogan and Piper. And he says, you tell him that Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon are the only true blue WWFers. And then he came up to me and he says, I'll tell you what I'll do. Within four weeks, I'll get you another movie at the same price. I said, not with John, John Carpenter directing, you won't. And that's what split me from the WWF. Why did he not want you to do this movie? Because he he's a control freak. Control, yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. all it was. Yeah. Yeah. And Lord help us if somebody did something better and got over better than he wanted. And it saved my career, this movie. Hmm. Because... Well, I don't know if you want me to get into that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm ready. I mean, the audience is ready. Whatever okay, you feel... well, uh, let me tell you what, what's going on is, you see, I was in the WWF, uh, and this was WrestleMania two. I was boxing Mr. T in Nassau, Chicago Bears in a battle royal against the wrestlers uh, in uh, Chicago, and Bundy and Hogan in... Um, L.A. L.A. And... Uh, uh, Help me out, I'm punchy. I wanted to tell you something. What was I telling you? You're telling me about uh, the issues behind you doing this movie. I said, why didn't McMahon want you to do this film? I don't get it. Control. Uh, yes. So, in the second round, boxing with Mr. T, I was, I've been the same kind of guy all the time. And second round, the people just started chanting my name. Piper, Piper. I never did, and it just just went like wildfire it was so hot at that time and hogan went to mcmahon and said well to hell with it i'll just i'll just ride on his kilts and i got it back mcmahon said don't worry i'll take care of piper so that's why he tried to keep me down so i said to myself well wait a second wait a second because he would have squished me squished me squished me i said if i got an opportunity with john carpenter I'll get out of my business, go around, if we, I didn't know we'd be this lucky or this fortunate, get a number one hit. When I came back to wrestling, I was twice as important as when I left. So you saved a good portion of my career <coughs> uh, with me not having to do other tactics to get it. This, how are you going to deny this? And when I came back, what's he going to say? The politics of that business are something I don't get, and I don't, you know, I think the politics of the movies are tough. <clears throat> I can't imagine. I can't imagine in wrestling the politics, especially when you have people in control and powerful guys who you, who, you know, you have to work for. It's a, it's a tough gig. We got, yeah, they've got one where the, it's, I call it now, we just, I just started a brand new league, um, oh, the team. XWF. Uh, it's guys got nine billion dollars, and um, it's going to be all over the world in China and stuff, and uh, one of the things I said is, uh, we don't have a wrestling league. We got a pornographic league, but we don't have a wrestling league. So, um, you know, I want to stay with the movie here, yeah. but what, I, what I'm saying is I saw Mick McMahon pull down his pants on TV no, I saw and it, have man. the wrestlers actually kiss his bum. Well, in my time, not would he not only ask, would he ever ask that, but you don't have that kind of money. Yeah. Nobody's got that kind of money. Um, it's a so this age. was all back to what I'm saying. This was the best move of my, oh, okay. at that time, for my career. Okay. And that's thanks to John Carpenter. Yeah. Hey. Nah, I tell the truth. I'll tell you when it's not. But that's the, I think the fans, I think the fans, you know, wrestling fans are all over the world. Wrestling's such a huge deal. And they all, the people love you. They want to know what's You know what? They want to know what's Can't going on. Can't go any you. place anymore. Yeah. But that's not a bad thing. They just... Hey, yeah. how are you? Yeah. They're just wonderful people, man. And you were a heavy dude. You were the bad guy, but they loved you. They loved. They loved. <laughs> loved that, to hate me. They loved that character <laughs> that you were. Yeah, loved. yeah. Uh, the thing was, okay, this was the improv. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay, and so I didn't know there was somebody coming behind me, and uh, I don't know if we, we might not have left it in. But I thought I was pretty slick. But that was only five seconds of the entire movie. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. We're getting near. Uh, my best we're stuff getting out. near the end of the of the film now. This is the kind of the final action. The siege on the 
on the building. Okay. Oh, this is great. This was an all-out Dedham scene, and it looks like it looks just as good as Lethal Weapon or any of the others. You did it in such a style, and this is my favorite part, being the action part. So I, I like this. This is the greatest part. Oh, that's I think, very of the nice movie. of you. Well, we had a whole <laughs> lot less money than Lethal. Oh, Lethal. we sure did. But you know, you know, it's we we had just as much talent from. Uh, from John Carpenter. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, it's a God's truth. Now we're going to have a little betrayal moment coming up here, which, which I really enjoyed a lot. I thought uh, that was that was fun to do. I think it fooled everyone. Yeah. Do yeah. you? I don't know if it did, but I wouldn't. I didn't expect it if I was an audience member. No, you know? no, no, no. She was too uh, too cool. Too cool. Couldn't read her. Yeah. Yeah, you, like, you like that gun, oh, huh? Oh, I love doing that. That's my favorite stuff. That's it. Give me another one, John. <laughs> That's all right. I'll go by myself. <laughs> Actors love. See, now oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. That was uh, over. And it's quick. Now. It's yeah, quick. Cool. Yeah. And you know what? Kids can watch it. Yeah, because you don't. You, because you didn't do much. that. Yeah. You're not okay. showing too much. Here we go. Now, this was a very, very special time for me in the movies because the helicopter was coming up. It was a big, big production mm -hmm. shot. Never, I don't want to ruin this. No, it's all right. Go ahead. And it was that. a big production shot, and all of a sudden, I'm turning around, and I was thinking of a lady named Lorraine Gauthier, uh, Gauthier Albertine uh, that uh, dropped me on my bum one time when I really, really loved her. Oh. And, and it came as a shock. So I remember the helicopter coming up, mm -hmm. and boom, and I remember thinking of Lorraine, and here, I wasn't, I wasn't, didn't want to just kill her to kill her, I was hurt more, I, that's where I was coming from, but at the same time, we're in the jam that we're in, and she's got a gun, <laughs> you know, Lorraine didn't. She didn't. Uh, <laughs> no, no. It's pretty painful stuff when that, when that rejection, isn't it, and love. Oh and man, love. I've had it a lot in my life. There she goes, boom. Now, yeah. here's where you, the character really shows his colors. Yep. <laughs> he knows he's going to die. Well, you, that stuff was flying all around you when we did that, as I <laughs> Do recall. Do you remember when they put the squibs on backwards? <laughs> okay. And the guy told me all day, oh, you see that? Yeah. See, that's... Yeah, hey. we had a good time with that. Yeah. And then... Uh, now, this I wish I had done better. And you told me how to do it after the after the time. We were they just things were crazy, but I'll tell you what I wish I would have done. I think better. you did it just fine, though, dude. I think you just being no. It's always See, he's always the rebel. I think it should have been straight and strong. Oh, yeah. Instead of just a week, it should have been my last defiance. You've been shot. You've yeah. been shot. Yeah, but I'm Roddy Piper. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I mean I'm not a. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Hey, it's been it's been really great sitting with you going through this movie today. John, I haven't seen you in 12 years. It's been a while. It's been a while. I think it's just been since we talked in '93. We talked on the phone in in uh, Toronto because you were up there making a movie. And okay. We, we chatted on the telephone. And then one time, just re fairly recently, but I haven't seen you uh, in 12 years and. It's been a real pleasure. I looked forward to doing this with you. And as soon as we talked, there was no hesitation in my voice. Absolutely. Uh, and as it ends, I just I want to say, you know, John, you have made a living from directing films here in uh, the film capital, capital of, L, of uh, United States, L.A. And the true test of genius or true test of talent is longevity. And you just made another movie. Uh, I don't know how many you've made. You write them. You do the soundtrack. I was there when you did the soundtrack. You do the whole nine yards. And I don't know many directors that do that. Uh, the bottom line I want to say is you have, t uh, have stood the test of time. And uh, the other thing that I hear about They Live all the time is I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. Yeah, that's nice. Well, I tell you, I'll give it back to you. I've never had another actor put the sleeper on me <laughs> and experience what that's like. And I got to tell everybody out there listening, man, that thing puts you out in about 10 seconds. It does work, doesn't it's it? Down, you're down and out. All right, guys, uh, thanks for listening to us. And uh, Roddy and I will see you in the movies. You betcha, you me. You'll be a half an hour in heaven before the devil knows you're dead.